You're welcome. Would everyone please state your appearance for the record and express your stipulation that the deposition and oath may take place remotely. Dr. James Eric McDonough, the pro se plaintiff, and I agree to the stipulation. Sam Zess, kind of voice Sirota Helfman for the defendant, City of Homestead, and the witness, and I consent to the deposition and the oath being done remotely. Elizabeth, no, Elizabeth School, City Clerk, and I stipulate. Stipulate. <laughs> um, That's fine. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Help you, God. Yes, ma'am. Okay. My floor? Yes. Okay. Could you state your name and occupation for the record? Elizabeth Sewell, City Clerk. And what would you prefer me to address you as, Miss Sewell? Miss Sewell is fine. Okay. Have you given a deposition before, Miss Sewell? Yes. Okay. Um, just some quick little rules or things I just want to let you know. If you don't hear or understand my question, please ask me to repeat it and I'll be happy to do such. I also ask that you please don't answer a question you don't understand and to please allow me to finish my question before you answer. If you need to take a break at any time or use the bathroom, please let me know and we'll be happy to pause the deposition for you. How long have you been employed by Homestead? Almost 11 years. And do you know what your start date is or as close as possible? May 10th. 2010. May 10th, 2010. Excellent. Thank you. And your current title is city clerk. What are your general responsibilities as the clerk? Um, I handle the public records request, which is a part of my duties. Uh, supervise the elections for the city of Homestead. I handle coordinating the agenda preparation for all council meetings. I provide notices of all council meetings to the public. Um, those are some of the main functions that I do. There are other functions as well. Okay. And have you had any other positions while you were at Homestead? No, sir. Okay. Um, what did you do before you worked for Homestead? I worked for the town of Golden Beach in the same capacity. And do you know how long that was? You were there? 2007 to 2010. Okay, excellent. And have you spoken with anyone about this case and or the deposition? Anyone other than the city attorneys? No. No. Has anyone told you how to answer questions? No. No, sir. No, sir. And, and no one told you to state or not state certain facts? No, sir. Okay. Have you ever attended a meeting about me? No, sir. No, sir. And have you ever received any memos about me from anybody in the city? Emails that have come through, but nothing directly about you to me. Okay. And have you heard anyone in the city make derogatory statements about me? Not that I can relax, collect, recollect. Okay. Um, I, I used to file a lot of records requests by hand. You remember that around the 2013, 2014 time period? Yes, sir. A at some point, well, I'd file records requests. I'd submit my request in writing. And then later I'd get an email saying that the records request was ready. And if there was a payment, I'd get an invoice. And it would have a copy of the request that I had submitted. And it always had a stamp on the top that said received in city clerk's office and would have a date. After a certain time, all the records I started getting back like that were not were stamped city clerk, but also stamped received in the chief's office. Do you know anything about that or why they would have been sent to the chief's office? Check to form. You can answer the question. Whenever we receive a record request and the record does not reside in the city clerk's office, it is sent to the department where the record is. Okay, and normally when you sent to, uh, if there's records that you believe are in the police department, you would send that to Paula Carvalosa, is that correct? That is our contact person for the police department. Is there anyone else in the police department that you would contact for, about public records? Probably Sergeant Morales. He is usually copied on those okay. emails. And, and so you don't know why my request started going to the chief's office? 
Vector no, form. Okay. All right, Ms. Missile, I, I really want to treat you politely, and I believe I always have. Do you disagree with that statement? Object to form. You can answer the question. I, I'm going to object because that, that has nothing to do with any of the pending public records cases or requests or responses, and you don't need to deal with any personal issues. Uh, during the deposition, so we can move on to the relevant uh, the, 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 subject is, matter. I, I note your objection. This is very relevant as to how Ms. Sewell feels about me and how my records request may have been treated. So um, could you answer the question for me, Ms. Sewell? Do you disagree that any time we've ever met in person, I have not been polite to you? There have been times when I've thought that you have not been polite. Yes, Mr. McDonald. Okay. Could, could you describe what it was that I, I did that was not polite? Object to form again. Same objection as before. You can answer. You can answer the question, Ms. Sewell. Your attitude sometimes is aggressive, Mr. McDonald. My attitude is aggressive. Okay. Uh, other than my aggressive attitude, is there any other treatment from me that you've objected to other than my emails complaining that I do not believe the law is being filed with response to records request? No. Object to form. Okay. Can, can you provide any concrete examples of me not being polite to you or being aggressive with you? Object to form, same objection as before. This has no relevance to any public records issue and uh, is not going to lead to the discovery of anything that would be admissible in this public records case. If there are things that, that have happened between you and the witness in the past that might have upset her. There's no reason for that to need to be brought up in this deposition. If that's the path you are going to go down in, in this particular deposition, then then we will end it and we're not going to proceed. Uh, I, you, you can do what you want and we can go talk to the judge if we need to. Um, Ms. Sewell, do you remember filing a police report against me questioning records request? Check the form. You can answer. It was not about you questioning records requests. It was about your attitude and your aggressive behavior. Okay, my attitude, my aggressive behavior. Fair enough. Let me see here. I want to uh, share my screen and let me see if I get the right one this time. Okay. This is, I'll show you, this is exhibit Q from the complaint. This is a narrative of, from um, the police report that you filed. Could you read this narrative for me, for the record, ma'am? Objection, again, this has nothing to do with any of the pending public records issues, any of the, the cases that have been noticed for deposition for today, it, it, it absolutely there's does. Nothing, nothing that could come out of uh, the questioning regarding this police report that would be relevant in, in those cases. Uh, would, would you like again, to if you have questions about public records issues, y yes, I do. Would, would, you, would, you like to, matters, would you like to certify these questions for the judge? To, yeah, explain to the judge why you, you need to deal with a, a police report um, that has nothing to do with the public records issues in these cases. This is absolutely dealing with public records issues, sir, with all due respect. How, how, how is this dealing with a public records issue? This is your the, the, this reference is Sewell, to this a, is, a... This is Sewell's response to me questioning how the city deals with public records requests it is absolutely relevant to how my public records are No, the only thing them. relevant in public records cases are, in, in these instances, it, you know, where we might have a disagreement about uh, an exemption, that would be one issue. This has nothing to do with the application of any exemption, and this has nothing to do with whether or not there are additional records that exist responsive to any of your requests. So in that, if th those are the only two avenues of, of relevance 
um, in terms of the, the public records issues in these cases. So um, w whatever prompted this report having been filed uh, has nothing to do with whether or not there are other records that exist or whether or not an exemption was properly claimed with regard to a particular request. So again, this, this, this is not relevant and we've given you a little leeway it, it, to ask her in, in, the same notice, but, in the same notice in 17017515, when you knowingly made false statements to the court, that wasn't relevant either, was it, sir? Dr. Dunn, I'm not going to get into a back and forth with you regarding that. And, you know, I obviously don't agree with your characterization of any of those things. This is a deposition of a fact witness. If you would yes. like to ask and, her and, questions and about I'm facts. I'm asking about related facts to, related to my public records request. Right. So ask about facts related to I, I'm asking about facts. Are you instructing the witness to not answer my question? What What is your question about this report? Uh, I would like her to read it, and then I'm going to ask some questions. She doesn't need to read the report. What's your question? So I know whether or not I'm instructing the witness not to answer or not. I'm objecting uh, on this exhibit based on relevance and line of questioning I expect to follow. There's not a, without a question pending, I don't have a question to instruct her whether oh, or not to Okay, well, you can, you can object to my questions. You, that, you can object to my questions when I ask them. Right now, I'm asking her to read this because I believe it is indeed relevant to how my records requests are responded to, and any animosity or aggression she has towards me is absolutely relevant when I'm claiming that the law has not been filed with my public records request. Mr. McDonough, Elizabeth, Bye. don't m Elizabeth, don't don't engage in a, a back and forth with okay. with the plaintiff. If he has a question pending, you can answer it. Okay. Um, what is the question you intend to ask? I have a whole list of questions. Um, about this report? Well, I, have, then, I have questions about this report and her response to records requests. I believe it's absolutely relevant. Responses you, to records requests Regarding made false statements on the record, I don't trust you, Mr. Zeskine. With all due respect, you have lied in this court. You've lied, made false statements knowingly to the court oftentimes. If you want to certify this, we can certify this, and we can go ask the judge if this is relevant. Is that what you prefer to do? Yes. Okay. Uh, Sylvia, can we note that uh, this copy of the narrative of the police report Sewell filed against me and the line of questioning that I wanted to ask for this has been certified to the court? Thank you. Ms. Sewell, do you remember me emailing you a public records request on February 18th, 2021? Check the form. You could, can you please, could you please show sure. me the public record request that you are speaking about? Sure, give me just a second. I'll get this up for you. Document W, you said 2021. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I meant 2019. I apologize. 2019 is the date that the request is filed. Okay. This is exhibit A from the complaint. This is an email that was sent to me from the clerk's office acknowledging my records request. Could you read this email into the record, Ms. Sewell? Your request has been received in the city clerk's office on 2-18-2019 and forward it to the appropriate department for processing. As soon as we receive a response from them, we will contact you. Okay, and I'm gonna highlight a little section below this. Um, it says PRR attached. I'm assuming uh, that PRR is public records request. Could, could you read what I've highlighted there? PRR attached, requesting all records, documents, leave slips, etc. Add infinitum 
related to any leave taken by Maguido between April 9th, 2013 and April 9th, 2015. This includes sick leave, vacation leave, holiday leave, administrative leave, and comp time, also including any leave or travel for training or any other official reason, kind regards. Hey, do you have any reason to question the accuracy of that being the request that I filed? No, sir. And in the email, it's stating that my records request was filed on 2-18-2019, correct? Yes, sir. So you would agree that I filed my records request pertinent to this lawsuit, 1906869, on February 18, 2019? Yes, sir. Okay. And could you read at the top of the email who sent this email to me? Julissa Chavez. And who is Julissa Chavez? She is the deputy city clerk. Okay. So we agree that Ms. Chavez is the one who initially responded to my records request, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Give me just a second. Okay, I'd like to, let me stop sharing this. And let's see if I can find the statute I'm looking for. Here we go, okay. Let me share this screen, if I can get this right. Okay, this is a copy of section 119.07 of, oh, I'm sorry, I, let me stop again. I put up the wrong one. I apologize. Give me just a second. Okay, the Florida Public Records Act, uh, I'll generally describe in here is FS 119. This is a section of Florida Statute 119.12, attorney fees. Could you read paragraph B for me? I cannot see the whole thing, Mr. McDonough. It's partly covered. Okay, let me see what I can do, if I can do something to uh, fix this for you. Is that better now? No, it's still covered. Okay. How about now? No, it's still partially covered. I, is it covered by the pictures of the people participating in the deposition? Yes, sir. So I cannot see the wording. It, you, you can minimize that, ma'am. Minimize what? The list that, that shows me, Sylvia, Zeskind, and you, at the top of it, you, there's a little button you can click and you can minimize that so the pictures won't be blocking your screen. Okay. The complaint provided with written notice identifying public record requests to the agency's custodian of public records at least five business days before filing the civil action, except as provided on the section two, subsection two. The notice period begins on the day the written notice of the request is received by the custodian of public records, excluding Saturday, Sunday, and legal holidays, and run until five business days have elapsed. Okay, and just for the record, let's go ahead and read section two that it's citing there. Can you read that for the record for me? The complainant is not required to provide written notice of the public record request to the agency's custodian of public records as provided in paragraph 1b if the agency does not prominently post the contact information for the agency's custodian of public records in the agency's primary administrative building in which public records are routinely created, sent, received, maintained, and requested and on the agency's website if the agency has a website. Okay. And displayed when you walk into the clerk's office, is there a document prominently displayed naming you 
as the custodian of records and providing your email to request public records? Yes, yes, yes sir. Okay. And, and I sent you my request to you via email, is that correct? Yes, sir. And would you agree that an email is in writing and not verbal? Yes, sir. Do you agree that my email was notice of my request for public records? Yes. Yeah, that's form. Do you agree that my email identified the records I requested and was seeking? Yes. Okay. And you agree with the fact that since records were provided me, that's evidence that my email didn't identify the records request, correct? Yes. Uh, the city has admitted that as an agency under Florida Statute 119, do you agree that the city is an agency and obligated to comply with Florida Statute 119? Yes. Do you agree that as an agent of the city that you are also obligated to the commandments of Florida Statute 119? Yes. Do you agree that other city employees, including the attorneys, are obligated as well? I can only speak for myself. Okay. Do you have any reason to believe that uh, employee of the city who's in possession or, or contractor of the city who's in possession of public records is not would not be obligated to comply with 119? Object to form. You're getting into asking her for legal conclusions. Okay. Would you agree that this lawsuit, 19-06869, was filed and served on March 8, 2019? I cannot recall. Okay. All right, let me uh, stop sharing this and let's see if we can find some other documents that might help us make a determination here. See, I get this shared up. Okay, this is Exhibit F of the complaint, of my amended complaint. Ms. Sewell, this is your affidavit. Do you remember this affidavit? Yes, sir. Okay, let me scroll down here a little bit. And could you read paragraph six onto the record for us? On Friday, March 8, 2019, plaintiff served his petition for writ of mandamus on the city. So you agree that I served the city my complaint on March 8th, 2019, is that correct? Yes. yes, sir. And you would agree that my complaint was filed before it was served, correct? Your public record request was filed. No, no, no not, not the records request, the lawsuit. I have to file a lawsuit to get a number for the lawsuit. When I served the city with a lawsuit, it had a number, so we could assume that my records request was filed on or before March 8th, if the lawsuit was filed on or before March 8th, if you got served the lawsuit on March 8th, correct? Check the form. You can answer. What I have here is March 8th. Okay. All right, and can you tell me how many days are between February 18th, 2019 when I filed my request and March 8th, 2019 when I filed and served my lawsuit? Mm -hmm. Would you like to see a calendar? Yeah, I would. Sure, let me, let me, I'll pull up a calendar for you. Give me just a second.
Give me just a sec. I'm scrolling through to make sure we get the right dates here. Okay, let me see if I can get this shared to you. Okay, I provided a calendar. This is uh, shows February 19th, or February 2019. Could you count how many days in February from the 18th through the end of the month is? You don't need to count the 18th. So the 19th would be the first day you would count. So it's 10 days. That's 10 days, okay. And now I'm showing March 2019. Could you tell me how many days are from the first of the month to the March of H? March 8th, I'm sorry? Eight days. Eight days. So we agree that this is 18 days from the time I filed my request until the time I filed the lawsuit. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, now let's do another little quick uh, exercise. I'm going back to February 2019. Can you count all the business days after February 18th? in the month of February? Eight. Okay, so we have eight days for February. Let me skip over to March. Now between March 1st and March 8th, can you tell me how many business days there were? Six. Six? So we agree there's 14 business days between February the 18th and March the 8th. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Would you agree that 14 is more than five? Yes. Okay, all right. All right, let me see if I can pull back up that statute again real quickly. Give me just a second. I'll stop sharing that. Oops. Scroll down here. Let's see. Okay, again, this is Florida Statute 119.12, Section 1, Paragraph B. That is what I've highlighted. Is there any section, anything in this section which states that I'm obligated to provide written notice that the city failed to provide responsive records? Object to form. You're asking for a legal conclusion. I, I, I'm asking her to read. I'm assuming that she's literate and understands the English language. She's the one that responds to records requests and interprets uh, how to respond to them sometimes as a city clerk, I would assume. You're asking and, her to interpret a statute, which is state law, and asking for her to give a conclusion about it. That's a legal conclusion when she's a fact witness. I, I'm just asking if she sees anything in there that, in her opinion, requires me to provide notice that the city failed to reproduce records. She's a fact witness and not here to provide an opinion or a legal interpretation. You, so I'm you, making You can question. answer the question, Ms. Sewell. Do you see anything, yes or no? Objection. She's not. She, she do not give your opinion about a statute or or uh, a legal interpretation. Expert witnesses give opinions, not fact witnesses. Okay, fair enough. All right, let's, let's look back at your affidavit again, if we can. Let me see. Here we go. I think this is it. And this is Exhibit F. I want to go to Paragraph 7. Let me highlight this for you. Could you read for the record your statement in Paragraph 7 of your affidavit, ma'am? Prior to filing of this of his lawsuit, plaintiff did not provide me with written notice that the city had failed to produce the response the records responsive to plaintiff's request. And did you prepare this affidavit by yourself? No, I did not. Did you 
prepare the statements or come up with the statements that would be made? The city attorney and myself worked on, I provided information to them and we worked on it together. Okay, in, in your paragraph seven, you state that I did not provide you with written notice that the city had failed to produce records requests. It, can you explain what the relevance of that statement would be in your opinion, in your mind? Objective form. You can answer. You can answer, Ms. Sewell. You're asking her to speak about why a statement is relevant? Yeah, I'm asking her, in her opinion, why she thought she needed to make that statement in her affidavit. Was that based again, on she's, the statute? Uh, again, the witness is not here to, to testify to opinion. She made a statement which she swore to on her oath. I believe I'm asked to ask her why she made that statement and what that statement means in her opinion or why it's there or the relevance of it. I, I, I don't know why that wouldn't be relevant to the line of questioning here. Ms. Sewell, are you aware of anything in the law that requires me to provide you written notice that the records request is not being properly provided uh, complied with before I file a lawsuit? Objection to form again, you're asking for a legal conclusion. You, you can answer the question. If you were to ask me for the record, Mr. McDonough, that the record would be provided to you. Okay, and if I ask for records and the records aren't provided, is it your understanding that I have to tell you that I think the law is not being complied with before I file a lawsuit? If you were to ask for the record, you would receive the record from the clerk's office. Well, here's the funny thing. In, in this lawsuit, I asked for the records, and I didn't receive the records from the clerk's office until after I filed the lawsuit. Here in your affidavit, you're stating that I did not provide you written notice the city had failed to produce records. I, I'm wondering how that's relevant to the lawsuit. In your Action opinion, form. in your mind. You just gave, she just answered your question. No, she didn't. She stated that if you had asked again for the records, you would have received the records. She just answered your question. You may not like the answer, well, but her, it's her, been asked, but it's been no, asked no, no, and no, no, answered no. at this point. She did not answer my question. She asked a separate question. She answered a separate question. That, that is not my question. My, my, my question wasn't, would she provide records? My question was, is there anything in your opinion that requires me to provide written notice that the law is not being required, complied with before I file my lawsuit? And again, objection to that question, you're asking for opinion, again, of a fact witness and legal conclusion. She gave you the factual response to your question. No, she did not. She, she stated that if I filed records request, the clerk's office would give me records. It's That's very, what, it's, 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 it's objective fact that I filed a request and records were not given to me until I, after I filed a lawsuit, sir. Not, that wasn't her response, Dr. McDonough. That, that was her response. So what was her response then? It's, it's been answered. It's in the, the transcript. I, I, I did not hear the answer. So Ms. Sewell, could you please provide me with uh, restate your answer. Mr. McDonough, if you were to request the record, we would, the clerk's office would provide you with the responsive records if they are provided to us. And if I don't feel that the city is lawfully complying with the Public Records Act, do you believe I'm required to provide you written notice that the city is not complying with the Records Act before I file my lawsuit. I've answered your question. You have, that is, your answer is not the question I asked, ma'am. That's the answer I have, Mr. McDonough. So you have no idea if I'm required to provide written notice that the city's not complying with the records request before I file my lawsuit or not. Is Again, that objection. That's a, calls for a legal conclusion. 
Miss Sewell is the city clerk she, and she a fact made a witness. Unlawful. She made a statement sworn under oath, sir. I'm trying to figure out why she made this statement and what her state of mind was when she made that statement. That is absolutely relevant to this lawsuit, sir. She's, and she's given you the facts. She has not over. given me the answer to my question, sir. You're because well, the answer you're the asking. The answer can be yes or no. The answer is Dr. not. Dr. McDonough, you are, ask, you are asking your for that's not asking, my question. You're asking for her to give you a legal conclusion. If you want to ask her about the factual basis for her statement in paragraph seven of the affidavit, she can tell you whether or not she was provided with right, good let me, notice. Let me, let me, you may, you, you, you may disagree. Let me, let me Listen, rephrase this. Let me rephrase no, this. This is my deposition. Me, I prefer if you'd stop there. I, I mean, you, I'm, this is I'm my still, deposition. I prefer if you'd let me continue with my deposition, sir. I will conclude my, my response on the record, and then you can ask your revised question. You didn't ask her about the factual basis for that paragraph and whether or not she received the notice. You you disagree that that notice is required. That's a legal conclusion. You're asking for her to give you a legal conclusion in an answer to your question. That is the basis for my objection. That's why she's not responding to that question in, in the manner you'd like is because you're asking for her to give a legal conclusion based on an interpretation of a statute. In her affidavit, she provides Miss Sewell, Miss Sewell, when you made the statement in paragraph seven, could you state for the record what your state of mind was? Objection to form. Pardon? I objected to form. I, I, uh, okay, uh, you, you can answer the question, Miss Sewell. My state of mind was if you ask for the record, it will be provided to you. So we're refusing to cooperate and answer my questions. I, I do. Would you like to certify these questions, and we can take them in front of the judge? Yeah, I think there, I think there is something that's being lost, uh, in her response to you that that's not coming through. I think she's saying, and Ms. Sewell can correct me if I'm wrong, that, that in terms of the factual aspect of of this response, that. If you had sent another notice sent asking for the records as opposed to just filing the lawsuit that she that the clerk's office would have responded i think that's what she said or is trying to say i don't think that this that in terms of the legal conclusion aspect of it again the objection stands but i think that's what's getting lost and the reason why we're going back and forth that question is doesn't need to be certified no she's only been instructed not to answer the legal conclusion Part of it, she stated over and over again the well, facts. Well, okay, that's that's the, fine. The basis for her Ms. Sewell, response. Why did you believe, or did, was there any reason that you believe that your statement in paragraph seven was relevant to the city's defense of my lawsuit? Question to form. Answer the question. I am not an attorney, Mister McDonald. You're not an attorney. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we've talked before and you've quoted sections of 119 off the top of your head. Is that correct? Yes or no? When it was in regards to providing the records, yes. Yes. Um, you've been a clerk dealing with public records requests at the city and other cities for how many years now? 11, almost 11 for the city of Homestead. And how many prior to Homestead? Three. Three. So you have at least 14 years experience dealing with public records requests. Is that accurate? Yes, Mr. McDonough. Have you ever received any training on public records requests? Yes. Okay. Do, do you feel that you understand the obligations and requirements of Florida Statute 119 as they pertain to you as a city clerk? Yes. Okay. All right. And do you think that I have to provide written notice that a records request has not been properly complied with? Is there is that a requirement for me in your understanding of the records law? Yeah, an objection to form calling for a legal conclusion. I'm asking for what her opinion and thought is. She said she knows the right. records she's law. Not, she's not. And again, right. Dr. McDonough, I understand what you're asking her. She is a fact witness. She's not here to offer her opinion about the law. Expert witnesses offer opinions, not fact witnesses. Okay. So without giving a legal opinion, 
you didn't see anything when I showed you the section of the law that said I have to provide written notice the records not being complied with correct section to form again you're asking for her conclusion about a statutory subsection all right all right let's pull the statute most will have her read it again miss so all right we don't need we don't need all this let me just could you read the first sentence I have highlighted again for the record please the complaint provided written notice identifying public record requests to the agency custodian of public records at least five business days before filing the civil action except as provided on the section subsection two and you agreed that I provided written notice of my records request five days before I filed a civil action is that correct you submitted your public record request on February 18 2019 and I filed the lawsuit on March 8 2019 and you admitted that was what 14 day 14 business days and we admitted that 14 is more than five correct yes Mr. okay so can you see anything in that section that requires more than what I have done section to form That's again fine. asking for a legal conclusion okay Let, let's look at another section of the records law real quick Okay, this is Florida Statute 119.0701. It deals with contracts and public records and contractor records. I'm going to scroll down. I'll go slowly so everybody can follow and see that this is the same statute. It's 119.0701. Under Section 4, Section A, Paragraph 2, I have it highlighted. Could you read that into the record for us? At least eight business days before filing the action, the plaintiff provided written notice of the public record request, including a statement that the contractor has not complied with the request to the public agency and to the contractor. Without giving a legal analysis, based on plain, simple English, and you being a literate person who can read in the English language, you would agree that this section is different from the last section we read, correct? Objection to form. You can answer. Objection form, and you're asking her for a legal conclusion. If you want her to, you want her to I'm say that the, 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 that the asking, language is I'm that the language is different. I'm asking, are these two different sentences different? As yes or no, they're different, they're different or not different. Dr. McDonough, these are arguments you can make to the court. She's a fact witness. Ask her about facts. Okay. When you wrote pair statement seven in your affidavit. Could you have possibly been confusing this section of the statute with the other section of the statute? Objection to form. You can answer. I've answered your question previously, Mr. McDonough. You did not answer this question. I'm asking you, is this section I'm showing you now, is it different than the section I showed you before? That should be a pretty easy question. Yes. Yes. Okay. See, that wasn't that hard. And, and do you think it could have been confusion between these two sections of the law as to why that statement was made in paragraph seven of your affidavit? Objection. She's already answered as to why she that statement was questions. made in her affidavit. Are you refusing to answer, Ms. Sewell? You just asked if you were confused. Just answer the question whether or not you were confused when you wrote that statement. No. No, you were not confused. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Deskine, could you please not tell my witnesses what they should say or not say? I consider that interfering. If you do that again, I'm going to file a complaint. Do you understand that, sir? 
I re I reiterated your question. That was you just told her what to say. I, I got a video. We got we'll pull the transcript up. Would you not I tell the client what to say? I didn't tell her what to say. I said he just asked whether or not you were confused. <laughs> answer the question. That's what I just said. I told her to answer. Okay. Okay. You just asked whether or not she was confused. Is that not the question? We could have the court reporter bring it, read it back. Could, could you read it back for us, Sylvia? Mr. Zestine's response. The question or the response? Uh, what Mr. Zestine had said. Okay. Um, he just asked you if you were confused. Just answer the question question whether you were confused when you answered that question. Okay. I'm sorry. I must have misheard it. Okay. So let's rewind for a second so we can make the record clear. We agreed I filed my request with you in writing via email identifying the records I saw on February 18, 2019 at least 14 business days later, I filed this lawsuit, which fits with, with uh, is, is that correct? Do you disagree with any of those facts, Ms. Sewell? No, I do not. No, you do not. Okay. All right. So I filed my records request with you on February 18th, 2019. Then you forwarded my request the next day on February 19th, 2021, to Paula Carvalosa, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. To the best of your knowledge, does Paula Carvalosa handle all the records requests submitted to the city but asking for police department records? I do not know. You do not know. And you wouldn't know anybody else that would be involved other than Fernando Morales, who you stated earlier, is that correct? I do not know the process. Okay. Have you seen Carvalosa's affidavit, or are you aware that she claims that she retrieved and printed the first set of records the morning of February 19, 2019? I have not seen her affidavit. Okay. Let's see if we can pull that up for you real quick. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page with the records. Let's see here. Carvalosa D. All right, this is Exhibit D. This is Paula Carvalosa's affidavit. In paragraph five, it states, the following morning on February 19, 2019, the city clerk's office forwarded a request to HPD. Do you agree with that? Yes, but that, not that that's true or not, but that's what she's claiming in her affidavit, correct? That's, yes. Then she states, on February 20th, 2019, the reports attached here to Exhibit A were printed. You agree with that? I cannot verify that. You agree that this is what she is swearing to under oath in her affidavit, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. So we agree that I filed my request on February 18th. You forwarded my request to her on February the 19th, and the next day on February the 20th, she had the response to documents. We agree there, right? Object to form. That's not what the affidavit says. And Ms. Carbayosa just testified in her deposition about that process and that she didn't know uh, when uh, she had that's fine. the report. It's real simple. And that they I were printed by someone else. February 18th. You forwarded to Carbayosa on February 19th. And based on Carlos's affidavit, she has the records on February the 20th. Would you agree with all those facts? Ms. Dr. McDonough, you're, you're asking the witness about someone else's affidavit and you're representing things that aren't in the affidavit and that are inconsistent with the witness whose affidavit okay. is his testimony okay. right. well, from this. earlier today. I'll, I'll re-ask re this. Ms. Sewell, paragraph four of Carlos's affidavit states that I filed my records request on February 18th, correct? According to what you have on the screen, yes. 
Do you have any reason to believe that I did not file my records request on February 18, 2019? No. You've already admitted in testimony that I did file my records request on February 18, 2019, correct? Yes. And you already admitted that you forwarded the records to Carveloso on February 19, 2019, is that correct? Yes. And we agree that based on what we're looking at in paragraph six of Carveloso's affidavit, she had the records the day after you forwarded her the request, correct? Objection to form. That's not what paragraph six says. And that's not what the witness testified to in the prior deposition. She testified that they were printed by someone else. They were printed by someone else. And she that she didn't okay. and she didn't recall when she received them. That was a testimony. You're asking Miss Sewell to testify about a statement that's in someone else's affidavit. She's not in a position to do that. She can read what's on the screen and, and read to you what's on the screen, but you're asking things that are outside of her knowledge and that are okay. and you're misrepresenting Ms. Ms. Sewell, could you and tell mischaracterizing me, could you tell me which date the reports attached as exhibit A were printed based on Carlos's affidavit. What's on the screen says on February 20th, 2019, the report attached here to as exhibit A were printed. Okay. All right. So that wasn't that difficult. So would you agree that at the time from the printing of these records on February 20th, 2019, and the records being produced to me on March 11th, 2019, was a lapse of 19 days? Would you like to see a calendar? Uh, yes. Okay, give me just a second. I'll get that up for you. Okay, this is February 2019. Mm -hmm. You don't need to count February 20th, but can you count how many days were between February 20th and the end of February, starting with the 21st being the first day? Eight. Eight, is, eight, is that your answer? Hello, yes. Eight, eight, okay. All right, and can you tell me how many days are between March 1st and March the 11th? 11. 11. Would you, I know you don't have a degree in mathematics, but would you agree that 11 plus eight is 19? Yes. Yes. Okay, so you agree that from the time that the records were printed on February 20th until they were produced to me on March the 11th, the time lapse was 19 days, correct? Yes. All right. Let me find something here. Give me just a second. I'll pull up. Okay. Okay, Miss Sewell. In your office, y'all keep a copy of the Government in the Sunshine Manual, is that correct? Yes. Yes. What I'm showing you on the screen now is a paragraph that spans from pages 164 to 165 of the Government in the Sunshine Manual. If you would please, I would like to ask you to read this for the record, but you can ignore all the citations, so anything with numbers in the italicized names just read the plain english could you do that for me ma'am the public record act does not contain a specific time limit such as 24 hours or 10 days for compliance with public records requests however delay in making public records available is permissible under very limited circumstances the court noted that a record custodian could delay production to determine whether the record exists if the custodian believes the same, the sum or all of the record is exempt, 
if the requesting party fails to forward the appropriate fees, otherwise the only delay in producing records permitted under Chapter 119 of the Florida Statutes is the limited reasonable time allowed the custodian to retrieve the record and delete those portions of the record the custodian asserts are exempt. Where the delays aren't justified, the Public Record Act holds official accountable. Thank you, thank you. You read very well. I wish I could read as good. I have a problem reading. I'm a little dyslexic. Um, so let me, let me look through this. Uh, now, the 19-day delay from the time the records were printed and the time the records were produced, that wouldn't have been a way to determine if the records exist, would it? Mr. McDonough, the record does not reside in my office. It resides in the police department. We provided you the record. I, 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 I understand that. But I'm saying, I filed a records request on one day. You forwarded to Carbolosa on the next day. The next day, somehow or another, Carbolosa has the responsive documents and then waited for 19 days until after I filed my lawsuit and after you told her I filed my lawsuit before those records were produced. That 19 day delay was not to see if the records exist, correct? Objection to form. You're I asking for the witness to testify to something outside of her personal knowledge. Okay. All right. Were there any requesting uh, fees for this records request that I submitted? No. And we agree that the day after you forwarded my request to Carbolosa, Carbolosa has printed copies of the request. Correct? I do not know. Do you know how it could be justified that it was a reasonable delay from February 20th until March 11th when I got my records? I do not know the process. You do not know the process. Okay. But in your opinion, would you consider that to be a lawful delay? Objection to form. You're asking the witness for an opinion again. Okay. With this section that you read for us, is that your general understanding of the Public Records Act, Ms. Sewell? Objection to form. You're asking for a legal conclusion. It, it was all case citations, which she just read, and a summary of those citations in the Sunshine Manual. Yeah, what well, I'm asking, is there anything in your mind, Ms. Sewell, that allows for a public records request to be delayed that was not in the section that you just read? Section to form to the extent that calls for a legal conclusion. Okay. So you, you can't, since you can't make legal conclusions, you can't say that the delay was justified or unjustified. Is that correct? I do not know their process. I do not know their workload. I do not know what goes on over there. That wasn't the question I asked you, Ms. Sewell. I asked you, in your mind, is a city clerk with 14 years experience doing public records, is there anything that you're aware of or that you believe allows a delay that you did not read in the section I asked you to read? Section to form, still asking for a legal conclusion. Okay. Okay. Would you agree that the delay from February 19th to February 20th is most likely very reasonable? Would you think that to be reasonable? Let me rephrase that. Would you think the delay from February 19th to February 20th is reasonable? Objection to form. Uh, Ms. Sewell, have you not responded to me in the past and acted, um, what's the word I wanna look for here? Uh, perplexed that I would question the legality of your or the city's response to my public records. 
I'm not sure what you're talking about. Have I ever mentioned to you that I thought the records request the records request law was being violated or that the laws have been violated? Have I ever said that to you? That you recall? I cannot recall. You cannot recall. Okay. Outside of your lawsuits, I cannot recall. If I told you that that day that you filed the police report about, I went in to question you about public records and I made a statement that there was a legal refusal and you were taken aback by my statement. Would you say that that's possible that it occurred or that never occurred? I can't recall. You can't recall. Okay. Okay. If um, we show you a video of the interaction, do you think that would help your recollection? You can show the video. All right. The delay between the first set of records being retrieved on February 20th and them being produced to me on March the 11th, was any part of that delay in your understanding or knowledge due to me failing to pay a fee? No. No. Okay. And in the first set of records that were produced to me, were any of those records exempt? I do not recall. Okay. The email I was sent with the first set of records didn't claim any exemptions. If there was no exemptions claimed, would you assume that there was no exempt material withheld? Yes. Okay. Is there any reason for you to believe that any of the first set of records produced were exempt or may have been exempt? No. Okay. When I deposed Paula Carbolosa earlier, she agreed that it was 22 pages of records and she stated that it would take her approximately several seconds to review for exempt material. We agreed that it would be 30 seconds or less. And so therefore we agreed that the review of all the records should take 11 minutes or less. A review that requires 11 minutes of time to perform, do you believe it's reasonable to take 19 days before those records are produced? Objection to form. You can answer the question. I've already answered your question, Mr. McDonald. I do not know their process. I, I'm not asking if you know their process. I'm saying in your understanding of public records, when you have more experience than anybody here at the table on public records, do you believe it's justified to delay 19 days the production of records over no redactions that if they were done would take less than 11 minutes to do? I do not know their workload or their process. Okay. In that last sentence that you read to me, you agree that it says where delays aren't justified, the Public Record Act holds officials accountable, correct? Not your opinion, that's what it says, correct? That's what's on the screen, yes. And do you agree that if public officials are knowingly or willfully violating the law, that they could be held accountable? Objection form. And again, I think you're asking for a legal conclusion. Okay. Ms. Sewell, in your opinion, in this records request, can you provide any justification for the delay in the production of records after they were pr uh, printed? The record is provided to you when the clerk's office received it. Uh, th that's not what I asked, Ms. Sewell. I asked, do you have any justification that you can provide to me 
for the delay between my records being retrieved and the records being produced? It's a simple yes or no question. Section to form. You can answer. I do not know their workload. I do not know the process. I do not know how long it will take them. That is to... not the question I asked. I asked, do you personally have any justification which you can provide to justify that delay? It's a yes or no question. Yes or no? Dr. McDonough, she's asked, you, you've no, asked she's the question, not, she's giving she, you she's the not answer. Answered my question. Ms. Sewell, you, you're, you're saying you don't know their procedure. So would you agree that you don't have any justification for their delay that you can provide to me? Is that correct? I cannot Jack, say that yeah. because I do not know what their justification was. And, and so if you don't know what their justification is, you yourself cannot provide me a justification. Is that correct? Not on their behalf, no. Thank you. Thank you. That's really easy. I don't know why we're making this so difficult. All right. Let me, uh, I want to go back to exhibit A here for a minute. Okay, this is exhibit A. This is the response that was sent to me acknowledging my records request. Would you agree with that? Yes. And again, who was it that forwarded this to me? Julissa Chavez. Okay, and can you state the date on the email? February 19, 2019. And you agree that's the day after I filed my request, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And there's only one Julissa Chavez, correct? Or let me Section to form. Are there, is there more than one Julissa Chavez that works for the city of Homestead to your understanding? I don't know. You don't know, so the answer would be no. You don't know of any other Julissa Chavez, is correct? Section to form. You can answer the question, is that correct? Yes. Yes, thank you. And Julissa Chavez is an assistant clerk under your supervision, is that correct? Yes. And throughout the responding to this request, you sent me some records. In the records that you sent me through email, did you copy Julissa Chavez in those emails? I can't recall. If I told you that you did copy her, would you believe me? I cannot recall. I cannot recall. Okay. Chavez is the one who initially responded to my request, correct? Yes. So would you agree that she's an underlying party to this transaction? Objection the transaction form. being my records request and the response? She's the deputy city clerk. That's not what I asked, ma'am. I asked, would she be an underlying party to the transaction, my records request and the city's response? She was involved in that, correct? Objection to form. You can answer. She provided you the response. So that's a yes. Is that a yes? Is that a yes, Ms. Sewell? Yes. It's yes that she was involved in this request, correct? I answered your question. Okay, all right. Let's go back to your affidavit, which is exhibit F. Let me pull this up. Miss mm -hmm. Sewell. I'm sharing on the screen a copy of your affidavit. Do you have any reason to believe this is not your affidavit? No. Okay. I'm going to scroll slowly through here. I'm 
trying to get to the end. Okay, this is the last page of your affidavit. Is, is that your signature there, Miss Sewell? Yes, it is. Okay. And let me highlight this little part down at the bottom. The notary section. Could you tell me who notarized this? Julissa Chavez, Deputy City Clerk. And that's the same Julissa Chavez we've been talking about, correct? Yes. All right. That's the same one who responded to my request, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. And you agree that you signed that affidavit? Yes. Willfully, sir. right? You weren't under distress when you signed that? I signed the affidavit willfully. Okay. Ms. Sewell, are you a notary public or have you ever been a notary public? Yes, I am. And how long have you been a notary public, ma'am? I can't recall. A year, five years, ten years, twenty years? Can you ballpark it? I'm not I'm not holding you to it, but I mean would you say ten years or more? Yes. Yes. So you're familiar with the requirements for a notary public, correct? Yes. Very familiar, correct? Familiar. Familiar. Okay. All right, that's fair enough. I want to show you another statute real quick. Let me find this. Okay, Ms. Sewell, this is for a statute 117.07, Title Prohibited Acts, and it deals with notary publics. Do you see this? Yes, I see it. Okay. You agree this is prohibited acts, correct? That's what it says. That's what it says. Excellent. Awesome. I want to scroll down to paragraph 12 here. Could you leave, read the highlight section for me there, Ms. Sewell? A notary public may not notarize a signature on a document if the notary public has a financial interest in or is a party to the underlying transaction. And, and we've already agreed that Julissa Chavez was a party to the underlying transaction, correct? Action to form. She is the deputy city clerk. She responded to the request and she was a party to the underlying transaction. We have agreed to that, correct? Well, now you're asking for an illegal, in the manner of a legal conclusion, so objection form. Earlier, you said that she was an, you agree that she was an underlying party to the transaction, correct? Earlier, she testified that she's the one that gave you the initial response. Yes. Okay. And you don't see any problems with your vast experience as a notary public, someone who was responding to my request, notarizing your affidavit, in a lawsuit about my request. Rejection yeah. to form. Okay. All right. You know, I, I figured with somebody with experience that you would actually know the law and you would want to follow it. I guess I was wrong on that. Move to strike that. It's unnecessary and now that it's just harassing the witness. Okay. Are you aware that I brought this allegedly improper notarization of the attention to of both Julissa Chavez and the city attorney? No. No. Well, I'm now making you aware that I have. Um, are you aware that after being made aware that this affidavit was likely almost guaranteed improper, that nobody has moved to withdraw that affidavit or to provide an affidavit with a proper notarization? Objection to form and move to strike that that's not a question, that's a statement. And there's, no, there's nothing for the witness to respond to on that. Okay. Let's move along. Let's go back to your affidavit here for a second.
Okay, Ms. Sewell, here's your affidavit again. Could you please for me read into the record statement paragraph number 20 and number 21? All non-exempt, non-confidential records provided to me by Ms. Cabaloza have been produced by the city to the plaintiff. That was paragraph 20. Can you read paragraph 21 for me? Oh, all non-exempt, non-confidential records provided to me by the city finance department have been produced by the city to the plaintiff. Okay. And do you still agree that those statements are true and accurate? Yes. Has anything changed that would possibly affect those two paragraphs? No. Okay. You stated in paragraph 20 that you provided me with all non-exempt, non-confidential public records given to you by Carbolosa. That is correct? Yes. Is it also true that you did not state that all records possessed by Homestead Police Department, which were both non-exempt and non-confidential, were provided to me? Let me rephrase that. You said everything given to you by Carbolosa, you gave to me. But you did not say that Carbolosa gave you everything in the police department. Is that correct? Or would that be accurate? Yes. Okay. And, and this would be because you would have no direct knowledge of this, correct? Yes. All right. You stated in paragraph 21 that you provided... I mean, let's see. I'll, you, you say in paragraph 21 that you provided all non-exempt, non-confidential records provided you by the city's finance department to me. Is that correct? Yes. And you have, you did not state that all records from finance or all records possessed by the city were given to me. Is that correct? My affidavit states what I said. All non-exempt, non-confidential records provided to me by the city finance department have been produced by the city to the plaintiff. Exactly. My question is, if the finance department had extra records they didn't give you, you wouldn't know about it, correct? No, I wouldn't know about it. So, your statement didn't say that all records possessed by finance were given to me because you would have no knowledge of that. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, okay. All right. During litigation of this case, Matthew Mandel stated to the court that the city had provided me all responsive, non-exempt, and non-confidential records citing your affidavit. But your affidavit doesn't support that statement that he has made, does it? Objection to form. You can answer. No, she can't. She, she's a fact witness. She's not here to testify about anything that's been argued in a motion. I, I, I understand. What I'm saying is in the motion, he says that city gave me every record in their possession and he cites your affidavit. I'm asking you, based on the sentences we have read from your affidavit, there is not support in your affidavit for such a claim, is there? Objection to form and she doesn't have to answer and you're, okay, I'm you're, 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 you're keeping things out of context. It, it's cited okay, let, 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 other let, let affidavits as well. Let me rephrase well. this, Ms. Sewell. Anywhere in your affidavit, to your recollection, and I'll let you read the whole thing if you want to, if you need to, have you ever stated, implied, suggested, or sworn that all records that are responsive to my request and non-confidential and non-exempt in this lawsuit have been provided to me? Have you, have you made such a statement? My affidavit says that all non-exempt, non-confidential records provided have been provided to you. Everything provided to you, you gave to me, correct? Correct. However, you don't know that the city's given me every record they have. Is that correct? You would have no knowledge of that, correct? Could you swear on the record that every record the city has in its possession responsive to this request has been provided to me? Could you make that sworn statement? To my knowledge, everything that's provided has been provided to you. But 
can you state on the record that every record in the possession of the city responsive to this request has been provided to me? Yes or no? Every record that's provided to the clerk's office has been provided to you, Mr. McDonald. Okay. Would you agree that you could not swear under oath honestly that every record possessed by the city of Homestead has been given to me because you have no such direct knowledge. Is that correct? Every record that's provided to the clerk's office has been provided to you. But that doesn't mean that- My knowledge, every everything the city has, has been provided. Everything that was provided to you is not necessarily every record in the possession of the city. Is that correct? Is there a possibility that there could be a record somewhere that somebody has that wasn't given to you? Is that is that possible? It's possible. Okay, thank you. See, that's not that hard. And I'm sure Mr. Zeskind would um, object to this, but you have no idea why Mr. Mandel would have attempted to mislead the court about your statements in your affidavit, do you? Objection, move to strike that. Okay. Uh, would you agree that such a statement based on your affidavit is misleading or incomplete at best? Objection and move to strike that. Have you ever had any discussions with Mandel, Zeskine, or any other city attorney about denying me records? Objection. She's not going to answer any questions about discussions with attorneys for the city. Is pri attorney client privilege? Um, 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 Mr. Not Mr. Zeskine. You're the attorney here. You're the guy with the bar license. Let's be real accurate in understanding of how the law works. If I file a records request to Sewell, and Sewell talks to you about that records request, you realize that is not attorney-client protected information, correct? That's incorrect, Dr. McDonough. Section 90.502, subsection 6. <laughs> All right, we, we, we specifically already, states we, we, we've already, we've already a, a discussion or activity Mr. Zeskai, that is not a meeting already litigated for this in court, and 90.502 does not apply to the Public Records Act. You, you agree that you lost that battle in our first case, correct? No, Do Dr. McDonough, with respect to written records or meetings in the sunshine, you are correct that those things are public and that 90.502 does not apply. Correct. But, and so if but you're, you're, no, so let, you're talking, Dr. McDonough, let me, if you're let talking me, to let a me, city employee, let me complete. It's let not me an complete. executive session. It's not no. privileged information, correct? No, that is not true. Okay, that's well, absolutely not true. It, yes, I was trying to give you the citation, and you interrupted me. Okay, what's the citation? Section ninety point five zero two, subsection six, specifically says a discussion or activity that is not a meeting for purposes of section two eighty six. 0 .011 shall not be construed to waive the attorney-client privilege established in this section. It goes on to state that this shall not be construed to constitute an exemption to either 119.07 or 286.011. So the, the written communications are public records. That would That's the application of 119.07. Obviously 286.011 are the sunshine meetings otherwise discussions that occur to which the sunshine law doesn't apply with attorneys uh remain privileged you recognize that it's the client that owns the privilege correct and the client's the city of homestead it is and, the, and, you're, the and you're very aware of the open government and government and sunshine provisions of the florida constitution and florida statutes correct the client's not waiving the the privilege here okay so you're gonna you're you you're going on for the record and saying that anything that you and Sewell talked about, even if it had nothing to do with litigation, you consider to be attorney-client protected information. If it result, if it relates to legal advice, yes, it doesn't. The privilege, attorney-client privilege, does not only relate to litigation; it relates to any legal advice. Yeah, if if if, so, if we're private parties, I agree with you. Being that you represent the city of Homestead, I completely disagree with you. So, um, Sylvia, that's great that you disagree, Dr. McDonough. I just cited to you the statute. She will not be answering questions regarding any discussions with okay. any of the, right, the well, city's well, attorneys. Well, well, if you want to, if you want to have the court weigh in on that, I, I that's fine, but she's not answering that question. Sylvia, could you certify this question? Uh, 
Okay, let me ask you another question. So, M Mr. Zeskind, you agree that your discussions, you allege, are privileged. But any writings, emails back and forth, are not privileged. Would you agree with that? I'm not answering your questions, Dr. McDonough, but okay. I... Okay, all right. Ms. Sewell, have you ever had any email, text, or other written correspondence with Zeskind, Mandel, or any city attorney about my records request? Yes. Yes. How many times would you say that has occurred? I can't recall. You can't recall. If I put in a request for production for this, could you get me all those emails, texts, and other times that you and Z Z Zeskai, Mandel, or other city attorneys have communicated about my request? You make a public record request? Uh, I'm going to file it through the court as a request for production of records. Which they have 30 days to respond to. If I email you the request is a 119 request, could you produce it to me in less than 30 days? I do not this, know. We can have this discussion offline. We're in the middle of a deposition. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm just asking questions. That's what we're here for. Ms. Sewell, how long do you think it would take you to retrieve any written communications between you and any city attorney? Objection. This is not, this has no relation to any of the pending public records requests of the subject in any of the lawsuits. You're not having the witness swear under oath how long it's going to take to respond to a new public records request. Okay. All right. Let's move along here. Right, so this is exhibit G from my complaint. After I had filed the lawsuit, I reached out to attorney Matthew Mandel to see about scheduling an immediate hearing for this case. His response back to me talked about several cases, but the bottom paragraph I highlighted is relevant to this case. Could you read that statement to the record for me? As for case number 19-05869, I understand that you now have the requested documents, which the city has not charged you for, so the matter is moot and we do not see any basis for a hearing on that case. When you read that statement, is it your understand? would you read that to understand that I have been produced all responsive records to my request? Objection to form. She's not the one that prepared that statement. You're asking for her to speculate about what someone else no, I, I'm wrote you. Ms. Sewell, if you. She doesn't have personal to... knowledge and she's not going to give you her opinion about someone else's statement. <laughs> okay, great. You know, Mr. Zeskine, I was hoping she could simply state yes or no. I guess we'll just skip that and I'll have to make your uh, colleague, Matthew Mandel, come in and answer that. Okay, we can do that. That's not a problem. Ms. Sewell, have I ever attempted to take your deposition in the past? Have I ever tried to take your deposition in the past, Ms. Sewell? I'm not sure what you're asking. You're have taking I, my deposition now? I'm taking your deposition now, yes. Before this, did I ever request to take your deposition or serve you with a subpoena for your deposition? Yes. Yes. And did you comply with that subpoena? Did you comply with that subpoena or did you skip the deposition? I didn't skip the deposition. You never failed to show for any event at which I've subpoenaed you for. Is, is that what your statement on the record is? That I cannot recall. You cannot recall. Okay. If I told you I tried to take your deposition in the past and I served you with a subpoena and you didn't show up to the deposition, would you say that I was lying?
I do not know what you're asking, Mr. McDonough. I'm, I'm trying to figure out why it is in the past that you have refused to cooperate with a lawfully served subpoena on you. I have Section never refused. Form. You've never refused. Your statement for the record is that you've never refused to comply with a subpoena or request for deposition. Is that correct? Yes or no? Ms. Sewell, yes or no? Dr. McDonough, if you have if you have an example that you want to show her, she told you she didn't recall ever missing anything. If you're referring to an instance where city filed a motion for protective order in advance, then uh, you filed a protection order without getting it granted does not excuse her from not showing up for a deposition. Okay. Ms. Sewell, when you provided me with the first set of responsive documents, at that point, did you consider the public records request to be complete? Yes. Yes. But it was not complete, was it? You asked for, you clarified your request and you asked for more specific records and those records were responded to. Those records were provided to you as well. Okay. I clarified my request. Can you explain how my request was clarified? Did it broaden or change the scope of my request? It narrowed the scope of your request. Okay. So you would agree a narrower scope has less records than a broader scope, correct? It was more specific. You asked for different records. Those records were provided. My email to you, my first email after the first set of records were not provided to me, stated that all records had not been provided to me and asked you to provide all records. I did not state what records had not been given. I did not change my request. Is, is that correct? Or are you saying that what I'm saying is false? Section to form. I have answered you. <laughs> the first time I told you that you had not provided all the records and asked you to immediately provide all responsive documents, did I modify my request in any way when I asked you that? Take your time if you need to look at records. Direction to form what? You can put the... You can put the email back up. I'll look for it. Give me a second. I didn't, I didn't have that one marked as an exhibit. I think it's exhibit. I think it's an exhibit to her affidavit. All right, it could be. I was trying to search my emails. Let's see if we got it in her affidavit. That's that'll work. Exhibit B to her affidavit. All right, let me scroll on down to that. Thank you, sir. Oh, I don't think I attached her exhibits on my affidavit in my thing, so I don't have that there. But let's see, she might have already said it in her affidavit. Okay, I got something that's good enough. Let's go with this. All right, Ms. Sewell, here's your affidavit. Paragraph 11 is you describing my first email to you. Could you read the email? Here, I'll highlight it for you so you can see it really nice and easy. There you go. After reviewing the provided records, it's beyond certain that not all records which would be responsive to the request have been provided. 
Aside from the single page showing Magrillo's request to attend an award ceremony, what was provided is simply sheets of compiled data from one system of one kind, which at a minimum itself would possess a paper trail or other records from which it was generated or created. Does that in any way change the scope of my request? Now you're starting to ask for records associated with the leave. So it uh, did. Uh, okay, all right. F fair enough, fair enough. Let's, let's come over to your paragraph four of your affidavit. And can you read the highlighted part, but just as with this in quotation marks, which is what you're saying my records request was? All records, documents, leave slips, etc., at FINDOM related to any leave taken by Maguido between April 9, 2013 and April 9, 2015. This includes sick leave, vacation leave, holiday leave, administrative leave, and comp time. Okay. And you're a government employee, correct? Yes. When you want to use vacation time or sick time, you have to put in a request to use that time, correct? Yes. Yes. That request is a public record, correct? Yes. Yes. And the records you gave me in the first set, let me know if you want me to show them to you. I can show you all of them. Were compiled yeah. records, as I described my email to you, that were required a paper trail from which they were generated. Would you agree that that's correct? Mr. McDonough, we provided you the records. Five separate times. Um, so, would you agree that when I sent my email saying not all records were produced because it was compiled records that would necessarily have a paper trail from which they were produced, would you agree, based on the language of my records request, that those leave slips, or whatever we want to call them, that have to be submitted to take the leave would have been responsive to my request? If they existed? Ex existed. And you would agree with me, the records from finance, let's say one, for instance, that shows Merguido taking vacation four or five different times over the course of several years, is not the only record related to Margarito taking that vacation leave, correct? I don't know. Well, you just said that if he wants to take leave, you have to put in a leave slip. So there would be something what? more than just the records from finance showing what time, what days he took leave over several years. There would be the not leave every, slips, correct? Not every department follows that. I'm not sorry, I didn't hear you. What was that? Not every department may follow that procedure. Okay. But after I sent an email saying that not all records were provided, because there was the records provided were compiled records that would have a paper trail from which they were made. Those records from which they were made would be the leave slips, correct? I am not sure. Okay. Not every department okay. do leave well, slips. Well, when you submit to take vacation or sick leave, what do you call that request? It's a leave. It's a leave. Can we could we agree that that's a leave slip? Some departments follow that process and some departments don't. Okay, that's not my question. My question is, the request you have to submit to take leave, will we agree that that's colloquially known to most people who speak the English language is a leave slip? Back yes. Form. Yes, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Okay. Now, my, re my request was all records, documents, leave slips, etc., ad infinitum related to any leave taken by Merguido. Therefore, those read slips were responsive to my request, correct? If they exist. And they did exist, correct? I don't recall. I don't know. Well, you provided them to me. Here's where I'm having a problem, Miss Sewell. If a leave slips get submitted over a course of time and they eventually go to finance and finance puts them into their record and pulls the data off of that leave slip to put in their form, you agree there's no way their form could have been produced without the leave slip being made before that, correct? 
objection to form? You can answer. I don't know the, the process. So you're proposing that a form that requires to be made from compiled data can be made when the compiled data doesn't exist? Objection to form. You can answer. Are you going to answer the question, Ms. Sewell? I answered you already, Mr. McDonald. I'm sorry, I did not hear you? I've answered your question over and over and over already. No, you have not. Yes, I have. It's a different question, rephrased differently. It's a different question. You have not answered it. You're asking for the same information. Just because you changed the wording of the question doesn't mean she hasn't answered the question already. Okay. Do you? She told you what she has. Are, she told you what okay, she has okay, knowledge. Okay, I'll move along. But she has Ms. knowledge. Sewell, of. Ms. Sewell, do you have any idea how the forms that you provided me in the first set of records could have been produced by the finance department without there being some other records somewhere along the way that was created to allow those records from finance to be created? Section to form. You can answer. I don't have knowledge. Okay. I mean, you are the city clerk, right? This is kind of your responsibility? Section to form. Public records requests submitted to the city of Homestead are your responsibility as the city clerk, correct, Ms. Sewell? Yes, but the records does not reside with me. It goes I, I, to I understand that. I understand it goes that. to the department. Could you let me answer, please? Sure. The record resides in the department. I send the record request to. They provide the responsive documents, and I provide them to you. Okay. And you can only provide me what's given to you, correct? Yes, sir. So if there was some nefarious agent in some department in the city, and they didn't want me to get all the records, and they only gave you part of the records, you would likely have no knowledge of that. Is that correct? I have no reason to believe that anybody is acting nefariously. That's not the question I asked. That's the answer. You have no reason to believe that anybody did anything nefarious to keep me from getting records. I got that. If somebody had done something nefarious to prevent me from getting all the records, and they've never told you about that, is there any way you would have knowledge of that? I've answered you. Objection to form. It's a yes or no question. Can you say yes or no? Objection to form. You. you have not answered Purely speculative. Question. Your question is purely speculative. My, my question is to go in to show that Miss Sewell provides me records that are given to her. She's probably doing her job right, but if somebody else is not giving her everything, she would most likely not have knowledge of that. Is that correct? I have answered you, Mr. McDonough. No, no, I have not said no that you know. reason. I, need to I have no, no I, need I have no reason to believe that anybody is acting nefariously towards you. I didn't ask if you believed that somebody was acting nefarious. I said, hypothetically, if someone was acting nefarious, you would not likely know about that. Is that correct? Are, are you a mind reader? reader? Objection to form. Are you, to strike that. Are you omniscient and know everything? That the form moved to strike. As a human being, you're limited into the knowledge that you can have. Is that correct? Yes, yes or no? no. Miss Miss Sewell, are, are you limited into the knowledge that you have or are you all knowing? I've answered your question, Mr. McCormick. You did not answer that question, Miss Sewell. Do you have unlimited knowledge or are you limited in your knowledge as a human being? Objection to form. Move to strike what? Why don't you just ask, what are you trying to ask her? I'm trying to ask her if somebody withheld records in an apartment and didn't tell her about it, she wouldn't know about it, correct? You're asking her to, to, 
testify and say, I don't know what I don't know? Is that the is that your question, yeah, basically? If, if nobody okay. tells you something, you don't know, correct? Or do you are you God and you know everything? Objection to form move to strike. So, so if somebody told hypothetically, if somebody from a department gave you records and said this was all the records, but they were incorrect in that statement, whether they meant to lie or was it an inadvertent mistake, you would know that that was a false statement, most likely. Is that correct? Y yes or no, Ms. Sewell? Are, are you refusing to answer my questions? Elizabeth, you can answer the question. He's asked you whether or not you know if someone has given you a record and it wasn't everything, would you know? No, it's a, it's a general, it's a, I'm objecting to form just in, in general because it calls for speculation is hypothetical. Okay. All but, right. No, I would not know Mr. McDonough. Thank you. So if somebody inside the city was trying to keep me from getting records, you wouldn't know that and you couldn't testify to that. Objection to and form. Nothing in your affidavit says that, correct? I answered you already, Mr. McDonough. I've answered this question in several forms. Okay, yeah, if you want to think so. All right, let's move along. So you agree that I sent you an email essentially stating that not all responsive records have been provided to me, correct? Could you please refer the email that you're talking about? Could you please put it up so I can see what you're well, I've sent you a lot of emails that said all records weren't given to me, but- That's um, the reason why I'm asking for the email that you're referring to. Yeah, hold on a second. Let, 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 let's look back at your uh, affidavit right here. Paragraph 11, there you go. Am I not stating in that email that not all records were given to me, essentially? Paragraph one? 11. Yes, that's what you stated in your email. So I've stated to you in emails that you haven't, that I have not been provided all responsive documents. You agree that that is a correct statement, correct? I agree that's what you have in your email. We agree that my email says not all records were given to me. Yes. So we agree I've sent you emails saying not all records have been given to me, correct? Yes, that's all your right. email. I don't know why you're making this so difficult, Miss Sewell. You look flustered and frustrated. I'm, not, I'm just trying to ask you simple questions. You, you seem to be frustrated. Object, Elizabeth, don't, don't respond to him. And, and you if, if he asks you a question, respond. Don't respond to, to jabs and unnecessary statements. And, and, and you would agree that after I sent you an email stating that not all records have been provided to me, that you subsequently sent me a second set of responsive records, correct? Back to form. You can answer the question, Ms. Sewell. Yes, records were sent to you. Okay. All right. See, it's, it's not that bad. All right. Now I want to pull up Exhibit H. Give me just a second. Okay, this is Exhibit H. Ms. Sewell, you just saw the email that I sent you on March 13th saying that not all records had been provided to me. This email is your response providing me the second set of responsive records on March the 15th. Could you please read the highlighted section of your email to me for the record? The remaining responsive records are in the below drop box link. If you were me receiving this email, would you think based on what you stated that there were no more responsive records? Objection to form. You're asking for her to 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 tell okay. you what well, you're what I'll you're rephrase. you I'll were withdraw. thinking I'll when withdraw. you read the email. I'll withdraw. I'll rephrase. Miss Sewell, 
when you stated the remaining responsive records are in the Dropbox link below, was that meant to imply that that was the rest of the records? It was records that I received that was provided to you. Okay. Okay. Still not answering my question. Would you agree that that statement implies there was no more records? Do you agree, yes or no? No. When you said the remaining records, the remaining responsive records are on the Dropbox link below, you would think based on the plain and customary usage of the English language that somebody would read that and believe there were still more records coming? Section the form. You can answer the question. I responded to you, Mr. McDonough. The records that were provided were provided to you. But you stated these are the remaining responsive dot records, correct? Yes. At that time, did you believe there were any other additional responsive records to my request? No. So at that time, you believe my records request was completed, correct? Yes. Did Was I ever provided responsive records to my request after this email? If you requested other records, additional records, yes, they were provided. I, I did not request additional records. I'm saying, based on my request, that's contested in this case, 1906869. When you sent me this email, you did not think there were any other responsive documents. Whether that's you were right or wrong, I'm not saying that you were deliberately trying to do something nefarious. I'm saying it was your belief there were no extra records, correct? Whatever records was provided to the city clerk's office, Mr. McDonough, was provided to you. As you ask okay. for additional all right, records, all right, all right, all right. they were provided to you. Thank you. Let me rephrase this. Your statement that the remaining responsive records are in the Dropbox below is a false statement because additional responsive records remained remaining unproduced. Would that be correct? Objection to form. You can answer. Whatever records were provided to the city clerk's office, Mr. McDonough, if they were not exempt, all confidential they were provided to you that is not my question you can answer the question you can plead the fifth or we can certify the question the question is your statement that the remaining responsive records are in the dropbox link below you agree that that's a false statement based on the fact that i was given additional responsive records after this email would that be objection to objection to form she already responded to she your question saying that, that she question. she she did. She that responded to you. And she testif Elizabeth. She testified that no, 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 at the no. that at the time she believed that that was everything that you had asked for. She already testified to that. So e even if you may have made that statement in good faith, that statement has a false implication that all remaining responsive records were being provided. Is that correct? I've answered you, Mr. No, no, you have not answered on whether you believe that that implication you made in your email was false. Was it false? Yes or no, Ms. Sewell, was it false or was it not false? Would you like to certify the question? From my knowledge, it was not false. Okay. But additional records were given to me after that email, correct? Objection asked and answered. All right, Ms. Sewell, could you explain to me how knowing I got additional responsive records after you sent me this email, how your claim that the main responsive documents were produced then, can you explain how that's not false when you gave me records after that? Objection form. She already responded to, she responded to your question. All right, look, she I, told I, you that, it, she, that Sil Sylvia, the, the witness is refusing to answer my question. Can you certify this question so I can bring it to the judge, please?
What what is the question that's the question is depending. your statement that the remaining responsive records in the below Dropbox link is a false statement or makes a false implication that there's no more additional responsive documents. And she responded no, previously. She did not answer my question yes or no. She came up she with answered, her she answered, no, no, no. She did not she answer answered that previously Mr. Zestine, that, it, that she, she believed that it was question. true. At, if she doesn't she want to answer my question, we'll go in front of the judge. We can move along. I don't want to waste time. I'm asking Sylvia to certify these questions to the judge. We'll ask the judge if she has to answer or not. It's really that simple. She answered that she believed it was true at the time she made the statement. She okay, said that. So, so now I'm asking her. She believe, oh, no, see, that's not what she said. You That's what I said. That is exactly what I said. So, so At you, the time, I believe that, to my knowledge, to my knowledge, it was true. Um, okay. It yeah. was true. So, so, all right. So, Miss Sewell, okay, we're getting somewhere. So, at the time you sent me the email, you believe that to be true, correct? Yes. But based on knowledge that you now know, you know that was false, correct? All right, let's certify the question. We'll certify. I'll take it from the judge. It's really easy. I don't want to waste any more time on this. All right. Let's uh, let's go someplace else. And what are you trying to ask her? If there were additional records produced after that, just ask the question. I said additional. I, I said it. I asked it. She wouldn't answer it. She keeps asking the first. She keeps re-answering the first question five times with the same answer. There's different questions. They don't have the same answer. That's okay. I'm certifying to the judge. That's kind. We'll see you in motion practice. It's real easy. I appreciate if you start trying to distract me while I'm trying to do my deposition. Okay, Miss Sewell. Um, all right, let me share this. This is exhibit I of my complaint. This was the third set of records that you provided me. Could you please read for the record the highlighted response? Attach your additional records responsive to your public record request dated February 18, 2019. These records have been redacted pursuant to section 119.0715B, Florida statutes, account, bank account numbers, and debit charge and credit card numbers held by an agency are exempt from chapter 119.071 and section 24A, article one of the state constitution. Also additional rec responsive records in the form of doctor's notes required to substantiate medical leave requests have been withheld as confidential and exempt from disclosure pursuant to health insurance, portability and accountability act, privacy rule of 1996 HIPAA and section 119.0714B, 112.087, 395.30257A, 456.057, Florida statutes. Thank you, okay. Now the beginning of that states, attached are additional records responsive to your public records request dated February 18th, 2019. Is that correct and accurate? Yes. Okay. So these records you're giving me here are responsive to my initial request. And they were provided after you told me you had provided all remaining responsive documents. So would you now agree that you're, the implication when you state you've provided all remaining responsive documents is a false statement? Even if you meant That's it to be true and you made it in good faith and believed it was true when you made it, it is a false statement, correct? Check the form. Whatever additional records were provided were provided to you. That's not what I asked. I asked a yes or no question, ma'am. Ms. Sewell, can you tell me who you carbon copied this email? Julissa Chavez. 
Okay, so I had to ask you earlier, which you didn't know the answer to, I asked you if you had copied Julissa Chavez on the emails you sent to me. Could you answer that question now? Yes. Yes, yes, you did copy her on the emails you sent to me, correct? Yes. So other than my initial email just to you, Julissa Chavez was intimately involved in all the communications in this records request, correct? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Okay. And this, which is where your third response to my records request, this is the, fr you, you claim exemptions from disclosure for certain records, correct? Yes. And this is the first time you've claimed any exemptions to my records request, correct? Meaning you didn't claim exemptions in the first response or the second response, correct? No. Yes, correct. Correct. So it was your third set of records production was the first time the city of Homestead claimed an exemption from withholding, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. If I had not sent you emails complaining that not all records had been produced, do you think I would have been provided with this second or third set of records? I don't know. But you stated you believe the request was complete, and when we deposed Carbolosa earlier, which I know you're not aware of, she stated when she gave me the first set of records on March 11th, she believed the records request was complete. So since both of y'all, both you and Carbolosa swear in your testimony that you can, that y'all both considered the records request to be complete upon the production of the first set of documents. That I would not have gotten these additional records had I not complained that not all records have been given to me. Is, is that fair to assume that that's likely true? My affidavit, said that calls for speculation. Okay. My affidavit said that everything that was provided to the clerk's office was provided to you, except yep. for exempt and confidential information. Okay. Is there any justification you can provide me with for why all the records weren't provided to me in the first set? Ms. Sewell? No. You can provide no justification. So to your knowledge, the city has no justification for refusing to produce to me all responsive, non-exempt, non-confidential records in the first set of production. Is that correct? All the records that were provided to the clerk's office was provided to you, Mr. McDonough? That is not my question, Ms. Sewell. My, that, that is absolutely not my question. Would you like me to rephrase the question for you or restate the question for you? You can. Okay. So to the best of your knowledge, the city of Homestead, its officers, agents, and employees, to the best of your knowledge, there is no justification for the refusal to produce to me all responsive records that were non-exempt and non-confidential in the first set of records. Is that correct? Check to form. Yes or no? Okay, let me make it easier for you. Ms. Sewell, can you provide me with a justification for not producing all responsive records? If you can't, the answer is no. Does that help you? As you ask for additional records, the records were provided. All the records were provided. All records were not provided the first time I requested. I had to repeatedly say not all records were provided. I still have a good faith belief to believe based on objective evidence and records that not all records have been provided to me. You've already admitted that you have no knowledge if the city of Homestead has indeed produced all responsive documents. So how do you align your response just then with your earlier testimony, Ms. Sewell? I'm not trying to trick you up. I'm not trying to trap you into perjury. I just want you to answer my questions. Object to form. Are you refusing to answer? What's the question? Does she have any justification 
Or is she aware of any justification that the city or anybody in the city would have for refusing to produce all responsive, non-exempt, and non-confidential records with the first set of production? Is there any excuse that you are aware of, Ms. Seward? Do you have any justification? As I said before, Mr. McDonough, I do not know the processes that's used in the different departments to provide the records. Okay. Ms. But Ms. when it's provided to the clerk's office, it's provided to you. Okay, Ms. Sewell, since you can't answer yes or no, whether you have justification or not, can you tell me the city's justification for refusing to produce all records the first time? Mr. McDonough, I have answered your question. No, you have not. It's a yes or no question. You explaining your answer to five questions earlier is not answering this question. Do you have a, do you, are you aware of any justification the city has for not producing all responsive records? Yes or no? And if you can't say no, please tell me what the justification you have is. Section to form. Would you like to certify the question, Ms. No. Sewell? No, the answer is no. No, you have no justification. Thank you. Yes, we guess they, it's possible. Let me put it that way. It's you possible. Are, you are not personally aware of any justification, are you? Well, you said it's possible. What's the justification, Ms. Sewell? Please tell me. It could be their workload. It could be the process that they, no, the no, understanding no, of the public be. record request. Not it could be. Not hypothetical defenses. Are you aware of any defense the city has based on objective evidence or records to justify not producing all the records? Well, we know the answer is no. I just to form. Say it. We requested clarification on your, your request. So as you clarified and you specified, we produced the additional documents. So the understanding was that the record was complete. The record request was complete. Ms. Sewell, with all due respect, that answer is false. Objection and move to strike. That's my answer. There's no, there's no place for a, a statement. The, the witness gave you the answer. If you don't agree with it, fine. If make arguments to the no, court, no, there's no, no justification no, for- she gave an answer and then changed her answer and started talking about hypotheticals. I'm asking her, does she have any direct personal knowledge of any justification the city could produce for not producing all responsive records? It's yes or no. Not no, oh, get, yes, this, she, this is that. Yes or no. She gave. She just gave you her answer. You don't like the answer. That's fine. But you can, any arguments you want to make, Right, look, 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 make look, look, to the court. She, she is not. This is not. This is not the. Is, this is not the venue for argument about that. She's giving you Ms. her testimony. Miss Sewell. Mm -hmm. Not a what if, not a what if, not a hypothetical based on what you can imagine. Is there any concrete example that you are aware of that supports a justification for the city not giving me all responsive documents? Effective form. Sylvia, she's not going to answer the question. Can you certify it? Let, she's thinking. Give her, give her a moment. She hasn't said she's not answering your question. She, has, she's in fact already answered this question on more than one occasion. There is possible justification. Not possible for, justification. I, I, my question is very specific. Not possible justification. You don't like my answer. you don't like my answer. She's, Dr. McDonough. She's answered the question. You don't so like the answer? There is, possible, there is possible justification because we did not understand your public record request. And, and if the city doesn't and understand it needed clarification. Let her, and, let her answer. And it needed clarification. As you clarified, we provided the documents. We did not withhold the documents from you. Ms. So there Sewell. is... There Ms. It, Ms. Sewell. Ms. Sewell, I, take a breath. I, I'm not that mean of a guy. You're not yes, answering my you questions. Miss Sewell. Yes, you She's answered your what, question. Me, what was that, Miss Sewell? Yes, I am. Is that what you said? She's answered your question, Dr. McDonough. She, uh, she's so given we, you the answer. So, so can, we, can we note for the record that Miss Sewell stated that, I yes, I was a mean person? Um, is that... Uh, <laughs> so was that Sewell, said? So, Ms. Sewell, you're, you're a public records expert. You've been doing this for over 14 years based on your own admissions. If the city is not sure of how to interpret one of my records requests, is it the city's obligation to reach out to me for clarification? 
Or is it my obligation to tell the city they don't understand? We provided the record that we thought you wanted, and then you requested or clarified what you wanted, and then we provided more. As you continue to clarify, we provided additional records. <laughs> oh man, this is gonna be so much fun. Um, would you agree that if the city is unsure of a records request, that the obligation and duty is upon the city to reach out to the requester for clarification? Would you agree with that? Sometimes the requester does not know what they want. They request, and as they get records, they request additional records. I do not In this case, okay, all right. You want to finish she's the answer? The, she's answering your question, Dr. McDonough. If you don't like the answer, that's a different issue, but she's in the middle of answering your question. Okay, you didn't even let her finish. As they, as they clarify their request or they see documents that they may ch choose to want, then they request it and we provide it. And that's what we did with you, Mr. McDonough. Ms. Sewell, with all due respect, that is not an accurate, that is not accurate of how this came down. Objection, move to strike. Okay. So I, with all your talking, I kind of got lost. So you agree that the burden is on the city to clarify a request they do not understand? Section to form. Mr. McDonough, as you clarified your request, we continue to provide you records. Not as I, well, I, I disagree with, I continue to clarify my request. I told you, give me more records because you haven't given me all the records. That is not my question. My qu I am not going to agree to that because in my opinion, you asked for records and we provided the record. Okay, all right, well, let, let, all right, let, let's, let's go with that. So your testimony is that the city has no obligation to follow up with a requester to clarify a request if they're unsure of what the requester is asking for. That, that's your answer. That's not my that's answer. Form. That's not what she said. That's okay, not what that, I that's said. Not your answer. Okay. What I said was we provided you records. As you got the records, you requested more records and we provided those. That's Ms. what I said. Ms. Sewell, are you a native English speaker? Excuse me? Are you a native English speaker? You've spoken English your whole life, correct? Objection to form and Adam and object to this line of question. What what is your what what is the implication here, Dr. McDonough? Are you are you are, I, I, I wanna know. No, either, say either, no, either say on the state on the state on the record the reason for you asking that question. State it on the record. My reason for if it, if it was meant to be derogatory or demeaning, state it on the record now. I'm not trying to be derogatory to me. I'm trying to clarify if she's a native English speaker and she understands the English language. All right, and if this goes any further, we're gonna stop the depot. All right, well, here's what my question is. Does the city have an obligation to reach out to me to clarify or does the city not have an obligation to reach out to me to clarify? You're asking her based on an interpretation of the law? If so, I'm going to object to form okay. and point for a legal conclusion. Ms. Sewell, if you're not sure, or somebody in the city is not sure about how to respond to a records request, who do you think the obligation for clarification is upon? Objection to form. You can answer the question. We thought we understood your request, Mr. McDonough. Well, obviously they didn't understand my request because they gave me five sets of records after I continued to like argue that not all records have been given to me. So do you think there's no, nobody has an obligation or there's an obligation? Is the obligation upon me or the city? Objection. She's answered the question already. You've asked it over and over again. She's given you the answer that they, the city didn't, <laughs> the city thought they understood your request. That's what she said. 
And then yes. when you when you ask for more specifics, they responded. That was her testimony. She's given you that answer several times now. Well, it's asked well, and well, answered. Well, well, I'm, I'm really confused because the city goes willy nilly on how they interpret my request. And you're part of this, Mr. Zeskine, and you will be deposed about this very specific thing if you don't get a protective order. I have filed requests and said I wanted all records and gotten a $1.25 million, $1.258 million invoice. I've asked, filed records requests and asked for all records, and you yourself, Mr. Zeskine, argued to the court that me asking for all records was not me wanting all records. So I don't know, how do I make sure that when I went all records related to something, how do I ask that? In our first records case where I was represented by Mr. Greenstein that you represented, that you represent the city on, Mr. Zeskind. You, you, you remember that case? Uh, this deposition is of the witness, not me, and I'm gonna move to strike okay. whatever that soliloquy just was. That's fine, I mean, you can move to strike it. I have no problem with that. But I'm, I'm trying to understand how my records request get interpreted because Mr. Zeskine, you stated, which I have the transcript of, that when I filed a second records request because I said all ad infinitum, that the ad infinitum meant that I wanted everything. In this records request, I said I wanted all records ad infinitum. Why would that not be all records? Ms. Sewell, I'm not asking you, Zeskine, Ms. Sewell, when I said I want all records ad infinitum related to the leave, why would that not be assumed to be all records related to the leave? Do, do you know why? No. No. Okay. All right. That's simple. And do you have any excuse for not claiming exemptions to production of records in the first or second response you provided records in? Objective form. Yes, no. Did you restate I'm, I'm that sorry, question? Did you answer the question, Mr. I didn't hear you. Did you restate the question? Is there any excuse for not claiming exemptions in the first and second response providing responsive records? Is there any reason or excuse why you waited until the third response before you claimed an exemption? Were there bank records? Were there credit card records in the, in the first and second records I, I that were provided? I don't care what records for. I care, is there any reason that exemptions i don't care what the exemptions were is there any reason the exemptions were not claimed in the first and second set of records when they were produced because they did not include any confidential or exempt records okay and we've already stated that you have no justification for why all records weren't produced to me okay let's move along objection move to strike okay that's nice Let's uh, go to Exhibit J. There's Exhibit J. We're already there. Hold on a second. Oh, no, 44. Yep, that is. Dr. McDonough, how much time do you think you have left with the witness? I don't know, two, three more hours. You want to postpone this and pick it up again later? You have to go somewhere? Well, it's we started at 1130. We've gone way through lunch. Um, you know, it, <laughs> you were originally going to have another deposition in 45 minutes, and I'm just trying to get a, get a gauge for uh, what your time frame is and whether you're going to allow the witness to, to, to eat lunch, whether you, uh, I'm just trying to get your. I mean, if, 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 I mean, if we can eat lunch in five minutes, that's fine. If we need 30 minutes or an hour to eat lunch based on the time that I'm going to need after eating lunch, I won't be able to complete this deposition because you're leaving to eat lunch because, before I have to go pick up my kids. So would you like to stop here at this point and we can finish this at a later date? What time do you have to pick up? Your kids. I just want to know what your what your cutoff is. I normally pick up my kids at two. Okay, so I mean, we only have an hour then, anyways. Okay, so you want to agree to uh, finish this at a later date? 
this would have went a lot faster if we were cooperating, but we're not cooperating. So I'm just again, uh, you, you, so can we go off the record for a second just so we can discuss sure, the? We can go off. The I don't. You, that's fine. you don't need your discussion about your kids and everything on on the record. So that's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah. So listen, if Elizabeth, do you want? Do you need a lunch break? Now we're we're twelve minutes in uh, away from the time that he has to leave. So. Uh, I'm assuming whatever, you're not finishing. Whatever you want to do, um, whatever your recommendation is, Sam, I'll go and Dr. McDonough, you're, you have to leave in 12 minutes anyway. Yeah, I didn't realize it was that late. We're, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that, was the reason for my, that was the reason for my question because we've gone on for two hours. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, are, and, are you opposed to coming back and finishing it up for an hour or two on a later date? Well, here's the thing. Are you? I mean, if you're out of time, you're out of time for the day. And we well, can... that's, 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 that's not my question. Are you agreeable to us concluding this deposition on a later date? Well, I mean, look, what? Let me put it this way: If you're not going, if to not, agree, what, if not, what's, what's your finish, plan? Let me finish. If you're not going to agree to finish this on a later date because you're using the fact that I have to end it, finish in twelve minutes, I'll go ahead and text my wife and tell her to go pick up the kids, and we can sit here till eight o'clock tonight. I don't care. No, I'm not. I'm not trying to have it. I'm trying to have a discussion with you about practically what, how to conclude this. If you think that you have, I, I think I have several a, more I have hours. Questions left. Um, I can get my wife to go pick up the kids. Do you want to sit here for? I'm assuming you probably have things scheduled this afternoon as well, and maybe we can do this next week or the week after. We can probably today maybe come up with a date that we all agree to, and we'll come back for this. Or do you just want to finish? I can power through if we want to. How, how would you like to deal with it, Mr. Zeskind and Ms. Sewell? Give, give, give me, Dr. McDonough, give me, Elizabeth, mute the thing. Give, give me a minute to speak with, okay. with Ms. Sewell. Well, 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 you got five or ten minutes. I got to go pee pee real quick. I'll be right back. OMG. All right, Elizabeth, um, I'm going to give you a call real quick. M mute your. Okay, your video. hang on, mute this stupid thing. Oh, here. Okay, I'm back. Hey, Dr. McDonough. Um, yeah, so if, if you still have, have time and you've got to cut off, um, as long as we, um, and we don't have to do it now because we've got multiple calendars to coordinate through, okay. but right. you want to, to circulate some, um, potential dates to, to pick this back up, then we can, as long as we're coordinating and working together right. and it's not unilaterally set, we're fine with. All right. Mr. That's kind this is what I was going to say. Um, you know, I have some left on the 19.06869. I haven't gotten to any of my questions about 17017515. Um, if you don't have a date right now, we can coordinate on a date later. I have no problem with that. As long as I, when we come back for the 1717515, I can finish up on the 06869. Are, are you agreeable to that? Yeah, that's not a problem. Okay. I, I, all right, all right. Like I said, I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, I want to be as reasonable as possible. And if you guys don't have a date today, that is fine. I just want to make sure that I can get these questions answered, and I want to make it clear on the record. Sylvia, if you could add this to the record, please. Hold on. That Let me get one. One sec. Okay. Sure. I have asked no questions about case 17017515, which was because we had noticed two depositions for today. So we will come back in the future to depose 17017515 and to conclude. 1906869. Do you agree with that, opposing counsel? Yes. And, and we will coordinate together amongst us to set the dates, and they will not be unilaterally set as long as this you and Sewell agree to cooperate and not refuse as we had refused in the past to cooperate. Well, we'll just say, because I'm not going to get into a back and forth with you about that, that we will coordinate with you based on our availability, the continuation of, of this deposition uh, in the 2019 case uh, and the, the deposition in the 2017 case. Perfect. Okay. 
hey, you don't have to agree with me and everything. I just want to make sure that we're very clear on what we're going to do. And I still have a right to continue asking questions about this case and the other case we didn't get to. As long as we're cool with that, I'm cool. We'll email in the future and coordinate. Everything sound good to you? Yes, yeah, sounds good. Just send send the email with with proposed dates. So we can we can check our availability. Okay. Uh, um, I, I make my own schedule, Mr. Zeskind. So if you could coordinate with Sewell and find dates that are available for you two and send them to me, there's a 95% chance I'll be available. In, in, unless I have something prior scheduled with another case. So if you guys could give me the dates, is, is that acceptable to you? It's fine. Perfect. Okay. And if you could get those to me, like, later today or maybe by Wednesday or Thursday of next week, you think you could do that? By the middle of next week shouldn't be a problem. I don't want to say that by today. I know yeah, that. No, I, I'm not going to hold you to today. I understand. You, you got, everybody's got things to deal with. They need to look at calendars and make sure. But you can get back to me by the middle of next week with some dates. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Perfect, perfect. Okay, um, I guess we'll conclude this deposition for today and we'll pick it up later. Uh, anything you need for me to close this out, Sylvia? Okay. All right, well, Ms. Sewell, thank you so much for your time and I look forward to talking to you in the future. Yes.